Hey guys, this is Stretch. I'm joining you now inside Microsoft Flight Simulator 10, with the VRS Superbug and VRS Tack Pack installed. Uh, right now we are flying over downtown Los Angeles. Well, not downtown LA, but we're flying over Southern California, beautiful Southern California. On the uh, left DDI here, I've got the stores config page, where you can see I have a couple harms loaded and a couple of Mavericks. And on the right-hand side, I've got the air-to-ground radar, uh, which is currently in surface mode, scanning uh, for terrain features. Uh, that beep you just heard was the radar warning receiver. If you look on the bottom right there, you can see that we've got uh, one indication of a SAM site. Uh, that SAM site is placed over MCAS Miramar. It's defending uh, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how we can use the... Uh, arm as a sensor to locate the emitting SAM site and then hand that off to the air-to-ground radar, refine the lock with the air-to-ground radar, then hand that back to the Maverick and uh, lays the target with the AT FLIR and then fire the Maverick which will track the lays. These are AGM-65E Mavericks which if you don't know are laser tracking Mavericks and not electronic Mavericks. Um, I just want to point out that this is not anything you should ever do in a real combat scenario. Uh, if you have a harm, you should fire the harm uh, rather than expose yourself by having to hold that laser lock on the target for the entire duration of the Maverick's flight. The harm is a fire and forget weapon. It's much more effective as an anti-radiation weapon. Um, but this whole thing should just hopefully show you how the bug works, how the avionics work. So I've set a steer point, uh, steer point zero um, over MCAS Miramar. If we look down at the moving map, we can see it's just about 40 miles away. So it should be just about in range of the radar, which is also at 40 miles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to air ground mode. And uh, then we're going to go to the harm page. Uh, this button here, harm override, we're going to box it. That overrides the self-protect mode so that the harm won't go into self-protect mode when we get painted. Uh, you can see now this, uh, this um, emitting indication is in the innermost ring, which means it's the lowest threat. Um, we're instead going to go to target of opportunity mode on the harm. This is the harm is sensor mode. You can see that we've locked up, or uh, we've detected that uh, SAM site. So I'm going to use castle left to set the sensor of interest to the left DDI. Then I'm going to press the uncage button. And you can see now we have a handoff indication. And on the right, on the radar, we have a blip where the, uh, the estimated location of the target is using an INS Flat Earth model. So now I'm going to use Castle Right to move the sensor of interest to the right DDI. And then I'm going to slew the TDC over that blip. I'm going to designate. And that marks, that freezes the display and puts the cursors over it. Then I'm going to designate again, and it gets a radar lock in the area. This isn't a precise lock, it was locked onto something. There you can see, bam, we've got a radar lock. It searched and it found something. It's probably the SAM site. And we can see now we've got a track indication. So now what I'm going to do is on this, the left side, I'm going to go to the Maverick mode and I'll wait for the timing counter to reach zero. The Maverick's set to a laser code of 1111, which is fine. We're not doing any buddy lasing. So we'll continue holding this here. And meanwhile, I'm going to power up my FLIR and my laser target designators. Okay, the Maverick is loaded up. Timer's still counting down. Uncage it. It's now uncaged and it's locked. We're just waiting for the in range queue. The timer's expired. 13 miles to target. You can see that in the HUD. We're going to arm. Now it's ready. And you can see in the HUD that the laser is lazing. And we have our in range queue rifle. The Maverick is off. On this side, 
we're going to switch to the Flur. The Flur is up. We're going to go to Narrow. Take a look at what we locked. You can see the, uh, the SAM site coming into view here. Unfortunately, what we locked was right behind the building, but hopefully we'll still be able to hit it. Start a designator turn here. Well, maybe we actually did lock the building. And boom! Well. Oh, yeah, that's actually not my bad. That's just that it's firing. Oh, uh, that's what we locked. Well, we locked this target, but it didn't hit, unfortunately, so we'll have to go around, make another pass. We have 30 seconds remaining until the lasers cool down. But everything's still locked up and ready. We just have to have a better azimuth for the target. Fifteen seconds on the laser. And the laser's ready. Let's turn in. beta software, so there's a couple glitches here and there. All right, we're in. And rifle. Laser is lazing, LTDR is flashing. And boom, that's a hit. Beautiful. Well, folks, once again, I want to remind you that uh, this is a not a very ineffective way to destroy SAM if the SAM were hostile. We'd surely be shot down by now. However, it is important to understand how to hand off between the uh, harm is sensor mode, the target of opportunity mode shown here, and the air to ground radar shown on the right here. Uh, this is because the uh, arm, while it can get azimuth information, azimuth and elevation information, it cannot get range information, so the missile can't properly time when to do a pull-up cue. However, if you lock the target with the radar, then your radar can give you range information, and the missile can plan a more accurate uh, flight path, which gives you a higher PK on the missile. So, if you have the time, you should always launch your arms uh, after following a uh, radar handoff. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this one for Southern California scenery and you uh, enjoyed a look at the TACPAC avionics. Uh, this is Stretch signing off.